Welcome to The E! Show with Neil Raven. Founded in 2013, the EHL has become the college placement leader on the East Coast. Sit back and learn more about the next step in your junior hockey career. Welcome to The E! Show, presented by the Penalty Box Foundation. The Foundation's mission centers around their daily motto, We Take Care of Our Own as they help out all of those within the hockey community who've experienced a catastrophic event. Learn more at PenaltyBoxFoundation.org. What's up? My name is Neil Raven, and this is episode number 104 of The E! Show. On this week's episode, the E! Crew returns for the first time since mid-December and sets the table for the second half of the 2021-22 season. Kicking things off in the weekly rundown, we take a look back at our way-too-early picks for the 2022 EHL Frozen Finals, and then moving along to the Fantasy Challenge, we include with our newest set of picks the addition of a selection from the EHLP. Finally, speaking of the EHLP, we announce all of the players that have been selected to participate in this year's All-Star Game on January 15th in our first What to Watch for segment of the new year. What's up, crew? It's been a minute. Uh, happy New Year! <laughs> Calendar's changed since we all last we saw each other. Feels like an eternity ago. It was December seventeenth, seventeenth, oh, the day after the showcase. Um, we didn't get together the following week because uh, of Christmas. Then we posted the best of. Back to that best of. There's been a lot of moments, a lot of funny moments in the podcast this year that I just didn't even realize, like. They were. I I listened to it three times. There were some moments where I was just on the floor, like <laughs> the Nash barking episode, like was ridiculous. Just we're ridiculous. here to entertain. She told us like a million times that you got hat trick points. That was mm. that was the best episode of the year, though. The yeah, piece okay. that Justin made that was one of our best. <laughs> ding ding, I, I, ding. I haven't I haven't had a hat trick since then. But um, how were your holidays? Did you guys get any special gifts for the holidays? For Christmas, I'm wearing one. I'm repping. I'm repping another podcast on our podcast with the okay. Chicklets boys. Yeah, Lauren's got a lot of Chicklets gear. Thanks, now. bro. So my parents don't get me many gifts nowadays. Of, of course, I am Jewish, so I got this well after Hanukkah ended. I got this as a Christmas gift for some reason. Um, everyone knows that I'm I'm 30. High school was a long time ago. I would never, ever pose like this again. But they blew up a high school picture of me. Whoa. And they made us put the stick <laughs> over our shoulders and tie the skates like that. Like, who uh, who does this? Like, geez, look at my geez. face. On the shoulders what? I get, but the, the skates, I, I don't, that doesn't. Hey, you're going to cut your neck putting so, those over your, over your shoulder. I open this and I'm like, thanks. And they're like, oh, you can hang <laughs> it in your office. I was like, I don't want to hang this. This was 12 <laughs> years ago. I've I've moved on from this. I'm not this person anymore. Wait for the like, JBJ <laughs> shootout, though. He's coming back. Oh, yes, who's back? Yes. Back and again. That's on January 22nd. So well, a lot to get to before that. So uh, mm-hmm. let's get to the weekly rundown. It's time for the E-Crew's weekly rundown. The E-Show weekly rundown is brought to you by the Junior Hockey Podcast. You're home for Junior Hockey News knowledge and nonsense check them out at tjhpodcast.com so we are not doing power rankings this episode because the last time we did them i want to say we only played about four or five games in the days that followed up to christmas Mm -hmm. not enough happened um but just so everyone knows where we're at for the ehl um the avalanche are currently the number one ranked team followed by walpole at two 87s at three ducks at four little flyers at five receiving votes at that time um, were team Maryland and the chiefs. As for the P the Rangers are one railers are two avalanche are three chiefs are four and Seahawks received votes that we did those so long ago. It feels like we did those literally three months ago. Like the season (laughs) ended and now we're starting like a new season. That was like a, it was also a vicious debate. We had, we struggled with that one a yeah, little bit, but, oh, but we'll bring those back next week as obviously games are returning. We're actually dropping this podcast a day earlier than we usually do because the first game back is little fires versus 87s uh, at Iceworks. So we're dropping it on a Wednesday, but what we can talk about is uh, Justin came out with this great graphic of a bulletin board uh, because we created some bulletin board material. Yes, we did. Yes, so, we did. 
to we did not pick for the EHLP. We'll save those for later on in the second half. But for the EHL, we did our way too early finals picks. And and just so everyone knows how this year's playoffs work, obviously we have four different divisions, North, East, Central, and South. Um, each division is going to have two rounds of playoffs. Actually, the East has a play-in game as well. Um, but after each division plays itself out, we'll have a champion in each division. So there's four teams that are going. How we're going to get the fifth and sixth teams to go to the finals this year the loser of the North division finals faces the loser of the East division finals and the same thing with the central and South. So with that being said, we each took our stab at who the six teams will be. The only consensus that we had <laughs> across the board is that we all four picked the avalanche to win the North division. No one's changed that opinion over holiday break, right? No. Uh, uh, no. no. <laughs> they, they obviously entering the holiday break with a seven game winning streak. It's tied with the 87s for the longest active winning streak in the league. Honestly, uh, maybe the break came at, the, at a bad time because they should have wanted to keep going, but they won five games in seven days. And yes, they look like the best team so far. Where we, where we probably differ after that and where I want to start this conversation in the North is who is the team of the other three that will offer them the most trouble down the stretch? Oh, who wants to go first with this one? <laughs> <laughs> because you can make the case that whether it's the Wolves, the Spartans, or the Lumberjacks, each one has made their case as the second best team at a certain point, right? They've each kind of been uh... Jek Jekyll and Hyde. The Wolves are right. probably playing the best, I, I would think, heading into the holiday break of those three. Yeah, and that's the thing. The Wolves have gotten hot. I mean, uh, how do we say our new man's name, Lauren? Do we we got the pronounce, correct pronunciation? Eddie's Grigiorevs? Uh, well, the I mean, the Wolves might look a little better lately, but, like, I still think for the most part, I almost feel like we've seen slightly better still from the Lumberjacks. I would agree. So I would, I would probably pull for them to kind of give the abs a bit more of a run for their money more than the other two. And those teams played, I couldn't even tell you how many times last year. Yeah. I was just saying, <laughs> we all remember the pandemic season. That was uh, interstate hockey only was created some bad blood, some healthy hate. But... It, it, it's obviously, it's going to be interesting, right? Because for the abs, looking at the way that we had things structured last year, which is, such a weird year um, that we had to come up with our, our own system as on the fly. The Avs have a chance to face the Spartans again in the first round of the playoffs. I know, I know people are probably listening to this and thinking you're like the playoffs aren't that close, but we're going to go through the months of January and February, just like that. And then mm -hmm. it is the playoffs. And the big difference between this year's format and last year's format is yes, there is a quote unquote second chance but well, you got to get to the second round first, right? So right. the Avs can't lose to the Spartans like they did last year in the first round, because if they do, their season's done. So maybe let me restructure my question. It's early, but if we think the Avs are going to win the division and be the number one seed, if you were them, who would you want to not see at number four and play them in the first round? Probably the Lumberjacks? Lauren's saying Lumberjacks. I think Lumberjacks, too, because of the combination of speed. And... I would think so, but, like, I, I see what Jeff was saying, though, with the with the Wolves, because they are kind of bolstering themselves a little bit because they have Yulenskis, they have Johnson, they have Malik. Like, they have, like, the list goes on and on. They just added Grigor Yevs, and he's been looking really good with Yulenskis. Like, the two of them are from the same country, so they have that kind of, like, connection going. Like, they have been looking better, but I still think – as a whole, as long as they tighten things up just a little more, I think the Lumberjacks is somebody that the Abs would not want to face. That's fair. Yeah, I think I think they're lethal. Uh, the Lumberjacks, I've said it, I think, on a multiple broadcast this year, kind of remind me uh, offensively of the Rangers last year where they can kind of go with any line. They have speed and scores on all four lines. Uh, Kotai has been good in that too, so you hope that that continues too. Uh, Gary Gill's coaching style seems – to be something that's been well-liked uh, by the Vermont Lumberjacks. 
I'm not sure if he's changed a whole lot from since Jim Masso leaving or one not. Big, but... One big change. If he is losing and there's like eight minutes left to go, he won't pull the goalie, goalie like Jimmy would. <laughs> yeah, <dude. laughs> like, like Jimmy would pull the, aggressive. Jimmy would pull the goalie at times where it's like, okay, I shouldn't be surprised, but like, wow, it's early. Yeah. So good point, that, Neil. Good point. And in the showcase, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was the Lumberjacks who overcame a 5-1 deficit against the Seahawks hockey club. They end up losing in overtime, but they were able to salvage a point. So the Lumberjacks definitely a team that uh, won't quit, and they're a team that just will never stop attacking. So I, I do think that they're a team that could give a team like another team like the Avalanche some fits in the playoffs. Yep. I was going to say next, speaking of interesting divisions, um, of course, Valley has – with Zach Needham come out with this behind the scenes look at their, at their team throughout the year. And one line that really stood out to me, cause they, they always mic up coach McGrath is he's in the locker room and on the latest episode, he points out how the best five teams in the EHL are in the East division. Did anybody else pick up on that line? Mm. He did say, he did say that he said that a while ago. So, <laughs> <laughs> but he still believes his division is tough. And right now, the way that things finished, it looks like the battle for the one seed will come down to the Rangers and Express, who are separated by a point. And then it's a 15-point gap between them and then the Wizards and Seahawks, who are tied with 27, Valley with 24. So it's almost like two different races, right? You have the race for the one seed, and you have the race to not be in the play-in game. Right. Right. And you got to wonder, we got the trade deadline still a little bit away in February. So there could be some names on these teams that we haven't seen yet, too. So I feel like that's the hard thing, especially for this episode. Right. We haven't seen games in weeks. Yep. Uh, we're going to come back and we're going to see some guys that were um, on certain teams. I know we can't possibly say certain things. I've heard some <laughs> things from some coaches. So we'll leave that where it is and leave our sources unnamed and players unnamed. But hearing there's going to be some movement of guys in certain places. So that could be well, season changing for these guys. I, I just, I still think it's funny that everyone says the East is such a tough division. Cause like I, it is I really don't, I really don't agree with that because if you look at the standings, like pretty much all season for the South, mm -hmm. it's a very tight race down there. And I feel like they're not getting as much attention as they should. It took a while for the 87s a little bit, little flyers pro tech. Not there's like less than 10 points between each of them. Maryland 39, 87s 33, Little Flyers 30, Ducks 29. Yes, there's 10 points between the Ducks and Maryland, but like at this point, it could be any of anybody's game in the South. Like it's so close. Literally, yeah, every team in the South has a winning percentage over 500. Yeah, but it hasn't always been the case. And the East was heavy at the beginning of the season, right? Warriors started out hot, Wizards started out hot, and now we've had some teams that have have cooled off a little bit, which which happens, and we'll see. I want to get to the South in a second, but for the East, <laughs> I'm, a reading, dog fight I'm, I'm reading the days. chat right now. Okay. I, I, I said the North was the toughest week one. I took that back. Anyways, <laughs> the, the East, uh, Lauren, we got, we got to, we made the bulletin board material. We got to answer this. Myself, Jeff, Anthony, we're sticking with the Rangers to win the East. You're going with Walpole. Is that because of the way that they finished before the holiday break? They just, they've been looking so damn good. You can't, <laughs> you can't ignore them. They're literally they, at the end of the first half, they're sitting one point behind BJR one. They have been figuring things out. Their goaltending tandem of Scott Bird and Jack Boschert have been seriously like helping them out. They're the guys in front of him have been getting so much better, getting pucks in the net. They're finally like one of those teams that have figured out how to tighten things up and get back where they need to be to climb those rankings. And it's paying off for them in droves. They were the two teams that faced each other in lat. Well, last year we only had three divisions, right? We had to do it based off of the states, but it was Rangers versus Walpole. Uh, last year with a trip to the finals in the line. I wouldn't be surprised if it was the same way again this year, but as we no. mentioned before, um, the loser of that would then face the loser of the North division for that last chance. in. so going to be really interesting because with how different each of these divisions are, every point is so critical so that if you are the Rangers or you are the express, you may get to a point where, the other team is probably going to clinch that number one seed, but you need to still keep playing things out because say 
you fast forward and you get to the division finals and you lose, you want to be the team that's hosting that one game playoff, whether it's against Vermont or Seacoast or maybe the, maybe it's the avalanche. You, you never know who it's going to be, but two very interesting divisions. Send I mean, us, especially at Rodman too, right? It was seeing big home ice advantage there. Oh, do they still the have wackiness. the, do they still have the bounce in the far right corner? Oh, absolutely. I was watching one of their P games recently and Tyler literally pointed out like it happened, I think two or three times in like one period. Like it's just like, you just wrap the puck along and it just shoots into the slot. It's like, it, it's like a, it's like a glitch almost, right? It's like a video game glitch, but yeah. it's the, you, the, ty- it's the Tyler Hassan bounce. Yes. Yeah. There you go. So <laughs> we'll hope the Walpole uh, fire department has to stay out of the building. It oh, doesn't get called in. <laughs> that was my Jeff. That was my new year's resolution uh, is to not hear any fire alarms. No more <laughs> fire alarms. We're so, all set. We've had our quota for the year. I, I think the, the level of how interesting things are increases when you get to the central, because I would say up until Thanksgiving and the beginning of December, we were all railers. The railers were or not the number one ranked team in the league. They kind of sputtered a little bit into the holiday break. And I'll admit one team that didn't sputter were the chiefs. Mm-hmm. Is this division going to come down to the railers and the chiefs and that's it? Or can we see, a Rough Riders or an Apple Corps get hot at the right time going into the postseason? I think if the Chiefs keep it up, they're definitely going to be giving the Railers a hard time. And I've mentioned it a few times in our What to Watch For. If you watch any of the games this season between the Railers and the Chiefs, that's some intense hockey. Like The Chiefs have given them a run for their money every single time. And up until the last little bit of that game, they basically have it in the bag and and they just, they struggle to finish against the Railers, but they give the Railers a damn good run at it. They, like most of the game. So they'll, like, that's one of my favorite matchups so far this season. And they play them again this month, I think. So like super, super good. I was going to say the best part, Lauren, they play each other five more times the rest of the season. So battle it out, boys. That's what you want. That's exactly <laughs> what you want. Yeah, like, Oh, it's, it's so fun to watch. So fun. Cream of the crop in the central, battle it out. You get each other five more times. Whoever wins more of those is probably going to win that division, possibly if it gets a little tighter. But I don't know. To answer your question, Tunia, with the Apple Corps and Rough Riders, they've looked better, but they have a lot of movement to do. Again, you could move some guys in there from uh, teams that some other teams in the EHL or maybe other junior organizations. Uh, but I think the Rough Riders and Apple Corps have a little more work to do to get up there. Of course, they're both only at 19. They're both tied at 19 points. Chiefs are at 23. Railers at 35. You know, that 12 point lead. That's where the Chiefs really are going to have to come in and win the majority of those five matchups. They got to win at least three of those, right? You got to think. You got to win three or four to, uh, to get that point swing in your favor. And this is like having the playoff format like this is kind of so unique because I, I know you face these teams like enough in the regular season, but it's going to become a lot of like, who do you want to face? Like, because you're, you're going to have so many matchups against these teams that it's like, if to Lauren's point, if you're the railers, it's like, can we just avoid the chiefs until at least the second round? Right. right? Like, do you want to play the known team or do you want to play an unknown team? It's kind of a team you don't know as much, right? Like we're, that's what we're trying to discuss here is, and just want to play the familiar face. Justin knows exactly where I'm going with this because one time in this now, this is my seventh year, one time in the history of this league, in my time in this league, did I ever see a move made in order to fix or alter uh mm-hmm. playoff positioning? Ryan Fruit, may you rest in peace. He was an awesome man for the New Hampshire Monarchs. Yep. Um, went out of his way to trade. Brendan Lloyd to the East Coast Wizards. Brendan Lloyd wasn't playing a lot of the time for the Monarchs. Went to the Wizards. I, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but they were like stupid. He he scored goals in like seven or eight straight games. And it took the Wizards out of the potential matchup to face the Monarchs in the playoffs and move them up a seat. It was like watching the whole thing unfold. I was like, he did that intentionally. Mm-hmm. Like that was his, that like he could have traded them to another team, but he did that intentionally. It all worked out for him in the end. Right now, 
could somebody pull that off? Fast forward to, to you know, I don't want to say modern day, but modern day, they could, but it, that's where it gets tough, right? Because I think you see this in all sports. If you start manipulating where you want to be, karma is going to come back around and get you. Yeah, I would agree. I, didn't they talk about that with the Colts years ago when they were trying to go for the perfect season? And yeah, that's what I was going to say, Neil, is that a lot of these coaches, a lot of these guys are veteran guys. They've been around a long time. You're going to say, we just have to go out there and play our best brand of hockey, right? You'll get pucks in deep, right? And just <laughs> like, do play your systems. And- like Anthony's fantasy team. <laughs> uh, underrated, underrated interview from the showcase. Have to say, have to say. Oh, when yeah. Lauren, when oh. Lauren just calls him out for being in last place in fantasy. How is it in the basement, Anthony? Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to fantasy. But um, the last division that we have touched on uh, on numerous occasions, and I think whether it was me saying the North was the toughest in the beginning and then we kind of shifted to the East, I think we're all in a consensus now that as the time has progressed, the South has solidified itself as what will be the toughest one. What makes it even interesting is, you know, with every passing week, something new happens, right? And Mm -hmm. where we get, where, I don't want to say we get lost, but it's, it's tough to see the bigger picture sometimes is why we're all here is to get kids onto college and, and onto the next level. So the wins and losses, while it's fun to talk about, it's not why we're here <laughs> for the, for the, for team Maryland, uh, their starting goalie, John Werber is going off to college now, which again is why we're here. Right. But what That's a tough. huge blow to that first place still team. But I think uh, Coach Fusco did a good job of working Gideon Sullivan in a lot towards the last, I'd say, last month or so. Because I feel like when we, like, going back to, this is why fantasy is helpful, too, when it comes to um, making our lives a little easier. Hopefully, Anthony, you'll agree with this, is (laughs) you start to see, like, trends one way or the other, right? And as far as, because we picked Werber was a popular goalie pick for a bunch of different, of all of us, and... I noticed that Sullivan was starting to play a little more than Werber was. So it's not like you're putting in someone that's only played one or two games this year. Sullivan becomes the man. The team's played well in front of him so far. Um, and now it's his net. And congratulations to John moving on. Like you said, Neil, that's what the EHL is about. That's what they're the best at is committing kids to college. And Werber, you play a half year with the Maryland, and now you're going on to college. So good for him. And that's the best part of coaching. you got to alter your strategy. I was just going to say, because it reminded me a little bit about when I worked with the Titans, the North American Hockey League, where we had a goaltender, Matt Ladd, who committed to Canisius, and he went to college uh, over the holiday break. And those are kind of things where the coaches know kind of uh, before time, you, you kind of see it developing. And that's when they give other goaltenders more playing time because like, hey, you know, eventually this is going to be your role. So I think, you know, Fusco probably knew that Horber is going to go for college. So Sullivan got more playing time as uh, the calendar year came to a close. But uh, you're right, Jeff and Neil, the the commitments are the most important thing for this league. And it's good to see Werber move on to the D3 level. I'm I'm definitely excited to see Werber move on. He's super nice kid. And it's funny too, because one name we haven't mentioned that's also in the same boat as him is Ty Franchi, and they actually yeah. know each other. They grew up playing. They they're not like super close friends, but they grew up playing each other a lot. So I thought that was kind of a cool fact to know about them. And it'll be interesting to see how Team Maryland fares because Gideon Sullivan is all they have right now. So they're definitely going to be relying heavy on him until mm-hmm. they can pick somebody else up. So that'll be very interesting to see how that plays out for them. They score a lot of goals. They have another goalie coming. They just, he's working on which one it is right now. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's funny because there's usually two or three of these each year. Um, and it's always this position, um, which I always say that my future kids are not going to play goalie because it's the toughest position in all of sports, right? Yeah. But you can't ever fault a goalie if they're being offered a chance to go prove themselves, right? If, if SUNY Potsdam calls up Werber and says, you're in net on Friday night, yeah, you got to take that. You got to take that spot, that that chance, because what it may mean for you over the next four years, you got to go. Now, right. it's unfortunate for Maryland, but they do have Sullivan. They're working on other guys to bring in, but <laughs> the rest of that division is probably, in a way, 
kind of applauding as John goes out the door because it yeah. kind of makes things a little bit more open, right? It has to. They're still the highest scoring team in the league. I though. mean, you would think so, but you could you you never know because as we said, Gideon Sullivan's been looking pretty good when he's out there, so he could blow everybody's mind. <laughs> so his his numbers aren't great. You can't judge him looking like at his goals against the save percentage goals against just over three save percentage right under 900. Um, but that team just scores a lot of goals. They average just under four goals a game. They have 112 goals for the year. They're the highest scoring team in the league. Can they stay at that clip? We'll see. That will make any goaltender's job a much easier one. If you can still average four or five goals a game, because you can give up a muffin or two, you can give up three or four goals and still win five, four, not the kind of games you want to win if you're coach Fusco, but They've done it plenty this year, and we'll have to see who the new goalie is that comes in. Can he push Sullivan maybe to be come a little better? Competition breeds excellence. That's what we always say. The other thing about Team Maryland, too, is that they're still expecting the, the return of Farrell Din because he had an injury uh, earlier in 2021. The last time Maryland came to Jersey Shore Arena, I was talking with Coach Fosco. He said that he was hoping for – I think like mid January coming back sometime after the holiday break. So if he can come back and kind of rejuvenate that Maryland offense and Jeff, as you were saying, then it will be easier for them to win those high scoring games if they have to. Yep. Right. I mentioned this team earlier, sticking at the South um, tied with the avalanche for their current longest active winning streak though, are the 87s. Are the Man, do they look good at Newington? Are wow, they are they the eighty were... sevens the biggest? Who are they team, or is that still Walpole? I don't know. They started <laughs> to figure themselves out, in Newington. Oh no, it's definitely it's de- no, it's definitely eighty sevens because the Express have I think pushed themselves a little more to kind of make more of a name for themselves so far this season than the 87s have but the 87s as jeff said looked great at the showcase Mm -hmm. matt herrick is getting back on the score sheet in terms of goals now because he is like absolutely racked up the assists but he he scored a beauty of a goal he was looking really good at the showcase and i had talked to him about that in his commitment interview too he was like yeah i'm trying to get back to scoring some more he's (laughs) definitely because he's definitely a big setup guy because you look at the assists it's ridiculous but he was trying to get some more goals out there and he definitely and then he just sniped it against that. bjr and here's the thing about the 87s when they had that losing streak they they were missing some of their top guys matt sudanowitz devlin O'Kane, ever schneider since then they added matt anastasio who that kid's went, so good he, he went pointless in his first two games but in the next 10 he's gotten at least a point in every single one of them they also stocked up on their blue line tobin winslow douglas mcguire both of them have been terrific and then you have other guys who have kind of stepped up over the last couple of games, Jason Atkinson, Robbie Seawagon, where they're kind of shifting into those top roles. And once they get Devlin O'Kane, Ever Schneider, and Matt Sedanowitz back, then that offense just becomes that much more stacked. So I do think that for the 87s, I know I'm biased because I, I broadcast their games, but I do think they <laughs> are not, for though. real. And even when they're in that losing streak, they were still losing like most of their games by only one goal. Yep. My uh, Anastasia was a great addition. So was Winslow. They've changed I, the team. You can see the swagger they have now. I know Justin wants us to do this segment so bad. Maybe there's a time later on for it. Contender versus pretender. <laughs> oh, we definitely need to do that. <laughs> Anthony Very is saying, good recommendation, EP. Anthony is saying, obviously, contender for the 87s. I think it's that division. I said this on a previous episode. I still think with that division, you can make a case for any one of the four teams to win and go to the finals. And yes. yet we, so, and that you still think the East is the toughest division. Okay. No, 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 I said, I said, uh, no, that was on. me, Laura. That was I me. said, Ryan I said McGrath East. said that. I said that and Ryan Neil McGrath said North. Said that. Yeah. Said North, yeah, but I once said you stop, uh, no. Once Neil stopped pushing for the North at oh. the beginning, he kept saying the East is so tough. That's because I'm Neil from the North, and I had to shift a little bit further east, and now I'm Neil from the South. I got my South. Be- uh, no, you're not. I, I have a South road trip oh, ready to not. ready to go in February. No, no. <laughs> wait till you, you see. Absolutely not. You know what? If anything, I'm the South. Oh well. We need to get to my fantasy picks. So let's get to the E-Crew Fantasy Challenge. (laughs) It's time for the E-Crew Fantasy Challenge. And the E-Crew Fantasy Challenge is presented by BioSteel, the sports drink of the EHL. Use the promo code ESHOW, that's E-S-H-O-W, for 25% off when you check out at biosteel.com. I didn't mean to skip over the P too much in that 
rundown segment, but there's a bigger P announcement coming later. So for fantasy, Save the best for last, it, I have to let out my frustration first because <laughs> We, we haven't pissed. we we haven't played any games, right? Nope. And Lauren's still getting points through stupid stat changes. <laughs> like I had which to is add, now over four hundred points. With I had to add changes. another assist for Colin Bell at the showcase this morning. Jesus, yeah. I, wa- oh I wanted. God, I was really. I I got the email and I was like, delete. Okay, I'll do this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like it's I'm just. Curious, he's I'm, like, I'm not. I'm I'm curious about to. this because I I I really don't know, and I don't know if you guys know what is like the most amount of points someone has gotten in a week. Like, I'm curious. Well, I, it's tough to say, right? Because with your. 82 well, not points even, not even just not even just this season but like when you guys have been doing this before like what's the most you remember anyone getting well i know all justin wants to say is that i changed the format so much so it's impossible to really decipher oh, it that's true but <laughs> but for for what you're pointing at for yourself your 82 points is definitely the highest that does span a two week stretch if you will um jeff had a had that 50 something point week i think that spanned like 10 days or so so yeah yeah i mean Anyway, the 82 points that you got leading up to the holiday break is why you are like out there right now. It's Spe- spe- speaking of scoring changes, though, I do want to give a shout yes. out to Mr. John Anasazi. Yeah. Because Tyler was shortchanged of a couple of points and <laughs> I'll, that I'll, I'll, added 11 a couple points. for, for 11 my points. fantasy team. <laughs> <laughs> my to, to, to defend myself, they weren't given to him live. So what, after that, the stat changes came in a few days later when I had mentally kind of turned off a little bit. I forgot that he was on your team. Good thing he tweeted because I added 11 points to your total (laughs) to recap where everyone's at for totals. As Jeff mentioned, um, the only person that has passed the 400 point plateau is Lauren. She's at 400. Nice to see you from the top as you would Uh, like to say. Yes, I did. um, I, I do have to eat my words because in the best yeah. of there was a segment pulled where I said, I'm from the top. The view is nice. Like, I'm not going to see you guys again. It's, I know it's... you haven't seen the top since. <laughs> 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 Whoopsies, man. Every week. Nothing, to do with, peel. nothing to do with my height. Anyways, Lauren Ooh. is at 403.6. <laughs> Jeff is at 363.6. Oh I'm at 349.6. Anthony's at 326.2. Um, because of the way things shook out right before the holiday break, Jeff picked first. And as I mentioned earlier on this podcast, we're starting a day earlier to include the first game back, which is 87s versus Little Flyers. So these are our picks for January 5th through January 12th. Jeff, who do you got? Well, starting off with the guy that I wish I had for the Newington Showcase. But he was kind of quiet at the Newington Showcase. There was a couple games before it uh, where Jack Devine had that five-point game. Yes. So let's go, Deviner. We need you, buddy. We need you. You're fresh off Dusty the break. Dustiest player on the Chiefs. I will Very, never let him the, live the, that down from the, the what player? Showcase. Dustiest. Literally, yeah. yes. He When the first time I went to interview the Chiefs was at the Worcester Showcase, and I was like, oh, I'm like, who would be like a good guy to pick from a game? Like you got, they had a bunch of people that did well that game. And they're like, Oh, you got to go with this kid. He's the dustiest player on the team. Whatever, whatever, dusty whatever that, whatever that means. <laughs> Lauren keeps thing. us young. Yeah, Lauren keeps us all oh, very young right? with the lingo. Yeah, yeah, ready? You want to see young, young Jeff? Here we go. Here's young. Yeah, Jeff. there we go. Yeah. We gotta, we gotta make sure that gets out to the world too. He's got to post that somehow. So Mr. Dusty Jack Devine, let's go with maximum dust this week's young man. Uh, and then we got Matt. I just sounded like I'm 92 years old. That one. <laughs> Let's get maximum dust here, young man. I need Dusty all the Devine. dust you can provide me with, sir. All right. So, anyways, <laughs> oh back to you show fantasy. What the <laughs> hell? Off the rails. Uh, off the rails. With D, we're going with Matt Herrick from the New Jersey 87s because we yes. talked about him earlier. Anthony's fist popping. Anthony, we need him to keep it up. He's over the 20 point uh, or 20 assist mark now. I uh, scored a goal in the showcase. I think it was a nice slapper. I remember from the blue from the blue line that I had the call of. Uh, so Herrick will hopefully he stays hot. Uh, New Jersey and the Chiefs also play four games this week, so that's why I went heavy with the eighty sevens and Chiefs because I got Jeremy Connor in net. Um, expecting big things out of him with the four games this week. 
And then Jordan Camilla is my utility from PLF. What up, Anthony LaRusso? And pause, Jeff. I, again, Ooh, I, pause. I didn't I didn't mean to announce this. I have to announce this now. I know, because I was just going to ask you, yes. should I even say my last one? But real quick on Camilla, he has uh, 10 points, I think, in his last nine games. Okay. Everyone, we've, we've been heavy on Kyle Patton this year for fantasy, but can't forget about Jordan Camilla. He's a point for oh, the yeah. player and – I hope and, that makes Alo smile. Little yes. flyers versus everyone. Everyone thinks Jeff is done now, but no, he's not. No, and no. you cannot say that I'm adding this in to cheat the system. Okay. Everyone has to, like, everyone is getting this. Okay. Everyone is adding. Just make team. the announcement, Neil. <laughs> like, everyone is adding an EHLP player every week. It's not just Neil. So I'm not <laughs> cheating. Okay. Jeff, who's your P player? <laughs> My P pitta, uh, P pitta. P player <laughs> is. And we're not sure exactly if we're saying Mike Bichetto. Yes. Or some people said Bichetto, but I think it's Bichetto. Bichetto. Yes. Top scorer He's, for the Rangers. Yeah. Leading scorer for BJR. Uh, so, Mike, we need you to be dusty as well. So, maximum yes. dust for all my men. Now, if I was cheating, Jeff, with adding the P, I would have done it two years ago when Johnny Malandrucolo played for the Rangers. Oh, he scored 9,000 like, points. <laughs> scored like six goals a game, okay? Yeah. I'm not I cheating. Him. Because we're all picking it now. Now let's hear your picks next, Anthony. Okay. First off, uh, for forward for the Valley Junior Warriors, I have Billy Hartnett. Uh, Donde es la fiesta? He scored the (laughs) overtime winner against the Seahawks (laughs) Hockey Club in the Newington Showcase. Uh, Shout out to Jim McCabe. That that was such a great call. I loved it. So uh, he is my forward pick. (laughs) For defense. I have Tim Duffy. You got to go with the Connecticut Chiefs. He has 13 points in 24 games. Picked up a point in their 3-2 win over the Little Flyers. So welcome to Team DiPaolo. For Apple Court, or a goaltender from Apple Court, Jackson Bernard, obvious choice. He is the guy for Apple Court. A couple of games against Team Maryland, so he will probably be facing a lot of shots, a lot of saves. I know for a fact, so I'll have Bernard as my goaltender and for utility i have cooper board leading scorer for the seco spartans has 30 points in 24 games picked up an assist in their final game of the calendar year against the protect junior ducks i think he will have a good start to the calendar year of 2022 and for the ehlp i have to go to vermont lumberjacks trent king when i was at the walpole showcase I was talking to some of the guys on the EHL team and they were telling me Trent King scores goals and they're not no cheapies. They're all elite goals. Uh, you know, top play talks. That's the, uh, their words, not mine. So <laughs> I have to go with Trent King. He is a, a really good player for the lumberjacks and he's my pick for the EHL P squad. One more comment about Jim before I move on. Uh, Cause I saw Jim right before the holiday break. I went to the Valley Walpole game. I was on Tuesday. I think the days all blend together um, on Tuesday. It was one of the last games before the break and Jim walks in wearing flip-flops. And I go, Jim, this what? is one of the colder rinks. Like, Oh, I'm in the process of moving and can't find my shoes. <laughs> I was like, I was like, <laughs> okay, you do your thing. I'm going to go watch the game over here. Anyways, wow. now to get to my picks, because I hinted at this before, because I just took a shot about how I don't like the South, and I have a lot of South in here. So first for the make f- up for that. Yeah. <laughs> first for the forward. Um, you know, from the South. I am picking this player purely based off speed. Like, Watching Tony Andrews skate, I was like, should we have a mm. fastest skater competition? Because he can oh, yeah. he can boogie. Like, he was flying in, in, <laughs> in Newington, right? So, I'm going Tony Andrews from the Little Flyers at forward. Um, going over to Team Maryland, sticking with the South on D. Uh, J.J. Creighton had a three-point game in what was one of the better games of the showcase um, when Maryland beat the Railers on that last day. Um, speaking of the Railers, they have a few games coming up, so I'm going to be – I think every time that we've picked Cool Honic, this group, it hasn't worked out for that person who picked Cool Honic. So I'm hoping that it works out better for me this time. Uh, for utility, sticking again back to the south, 
there's been a lot of love given this season for Nick Newman and, and Spencer Quinn. I think James Tilly is probably one of the more underrated forwards in this league. His most recent game, because my trend I'm going for is momentum into the holiday break. He had a hat trick and an assist uh, when the Ducks beat the Spartans the last day of the showcase. And then I actually mentioned my EHLP players, or his name, I should say, off air before I got on with you guys because for my first EHLP selection ever, I'm sticking with my hometown, Scarborough, Maine, and Nolan Matthews. So there's hey. my there's my five. You know what, Jeff? You know what I haven't done a lot of this season? You haven't brought up Maine a lot. Yeah. I, ha- I really haven't. And <laughs> that would be an easy next video for Justin to make with like the ding counter. Like last year, I probably said Maine a thousand times. I haven't said it that much this year. I feel like I mentioned more of my broadcast now because I'm so it's so like ingrained in my head. I'm like, oh, this guy's from Maine. Oh, that'll make Commissioner Rabbit. Happy. Oh, this guy's from Maine. Did you guys know that Commissioner Rabbit's from Maine? <laughs> like I picked up your torch there, buddy, and, and let everyone know where you're from. Yeah, and that gives us or sets us up for the team that's in first place. And Lauren, I have to take a jab because you're in first place. Um, maybe if you weren't picking last, you wouldn't pick other people's players that have already been picked. I was having a hard day yesterday. Okay, we'll just was, leave it at that. We won't. We all love you so much. Yes, it was a long day. It's okay. That's why I put erasers on pencils. I always say it. Yes, that's, that's your true. favorite line. It's my favorite well, one. This was after Jeff and I had gone over HLP stuff, so I was just I was struggling. And yeah, we so had a true. meeting of the minds. <laughs> Oh, for something God. that we have not talked just, about. Just, just, just for context, for people who may be confused, we, we always make the picks the, the day before we record the podcast. And Lauren had to redo her picks twice because <laughs> she had picked somebody that. I can't read. should take your goalie first. Jeff, Jeff took my already forward. picked. <laughs> took, when it was yeah, equal I opportunity, you took read. my forward. You took Anthony's. But, but Lauren, in your defense, I did that too earlier in the season. Like you yep. said, it happens to the best of us. We're all doing nine yeah, million I don't things. Know what's going on? Yeah, it was quite a time. But I, I ended up with some good choices. I think there was quite a few guys that were, I would have thought obvious choices, but I guess got left behind for me. So that's Ooh. good. <laughs> Starting Jabs off the board, I am picking from the Red Hot Chiefs as they're coming off such a successful showcase and a college commitment for their captain, Dominic Cherico. I am picking forward Hunter Rossi. He was really good at that showcase. I believe he got an assist on Justin Harshaw's goal, who Harshaw I had last week. So that was really fun to see. And they were super excited about that. And we had him mic'd up for that. So that was fun to hear. They were super excited once they realized it was fantasy points. That was very entertaining. And for defense, I'm pulling from the south i'm showing some ducks love i'm picking ryan bro i think he's really fun to watch Uh, the ducks have been looking pretty good as of late they looked really good at the showcase so i'm excited to see more from him and my goalie pick we have actually talked about him a little bit so far on the podcast i'm picking gideon sullivan i think because they only have him right now until they get the this other backup goalie in place i think they're definitely going to be relying on him because he's all they're all he's all they have so I'm excited to see how that plays out for him and that team and for my utility pick I am picking again from the central with Colin Callanan from the New York Apple Corps he's been gross this season we've picked him a couple times on various people's teams like he's just he's a guy you you got to pick him up at some point like he's so good and for my P pick, this one is kind of fun. I picked from the team who has the most games so far in this fantasy week. I'm picking Alden Swiss from the Boston Junior Rangers. He's actually from Durham, New Hampshire, which is where my college was, which I thought was kind of cool. He's not the biggest guy, but his points look pretty good. He's got seven goals and 11 assists over 24 games. He's got a couple power play goals and assists. He's got one game winner and he seems to stay out of the penalty box for the most part with only six penalty minutes. So that's something I like to see. It's not always good when a guy's spending more time in the penalty box than they are on the ice. So mm-hmm. I'm excited make to see a what he can do for me. No. Mm-hmm. You can just won't be a good hockey Unless player. Unless you're Jack Bosher that one week where they gave him a goal <laughs> when he was the backup. <laughs> God. <laughs> then Sean Walsh called me while I was like in the middle of the store. Jefferson, did they give you that? That I, He scored. What do you mean? You didn't get the points I'm for I'm still the only Walsh one that has goalie points so far for like not typical goalie things this season. Yes, you have a goalie, goalie assist. assist. Yeah. Not a power play too, wasn't it? Uh, I think it was shorthanded. 
Oh, <laughs> but That's Jeff, funny. it's a new year. You know what? I woke up new year, new and I said, we have two months left to get things close. And then remember when we, when we get to the playoffs, we have the picks for the playoff rounds, obviously too. Yep. And we picked the bracket. So there's plenty of time to play catch up, but yeah, brackets like the all-star challenge. You can get points in bunches or you're getting up. And while we're on fantasy, before we move on, I do have to point out that we are all part of a separate fantasy league, not about the EHL. It's about mm. the NHL. Lauren is not in first place in that, but she is no. facing me this week, which is a um, a battle for last place. So, <laughs> and I'm playing Anthony this week. Isn't I, that weird? I've been busy with other stuff for this week, so I I will 100 percent admit that I have slacked off on my team on there. I'm I'm usually better than that i wouldn't say at the top <laughs> usually but i'm definitely not usually scraping the bottom of the barrel that's for sure well, like, we're this playing, is like week though i'm two playing seasons you're I'm playing, playing anthony yeah team. It, it's that's funny weird. the standings the standings in our ehl fantasy right they go lauren jeff neil uh anthony you almost reverse it for the yeah. nhl fantasy Interesting. Anthony, me. Yeah. <laughs> Anthony, me, you, Lauren. Lauren you know, Tyler, I, Reed, given, you know, I will 100% admit I have not given enough attention <laughs> to it. I, it's, it's a problem. It's a new, it's like you said, it's a new year. I will pick things up and figure it out. Yeah. And also Tyler Rago took over a franchise that was yeah. uh, left dormant. And yeah. our executive producer, Justin Spateri is sitting in second place. Plays with squirrels is eight and three. They're looking good. <laughs> I and- still think I have a fun team name. You got to say. Yeah. Low lifers. Low yes. life. The low lives. <laughs> Yes. So below. with that, I kind of teased this earlier. We do have a big announcement for the EHLP, which we're going to get to now in our what to watch for segment. Before we wrap things up, here's what to watch for this week in the E Show. What to watch for is presented by Hockey TV, the official streaming platform for your EHL and EHLP action through the 2021-2022 season. So like the all-star classic, we that was the first time we ever had that this year. For the first time ever, we're having an EHLP All Star game this year, Yay. taking place on Saturday, January fifteenth uh, at seven thirty. The rinks to Exeter. It's the last game of the day on the Supreme Rink, um, which is the rink it's when you walk in. One. It's the it's the one right in front of you. So. I haven't figured out yet how we're going to do the bonus points for this. We can't really do it the same way we did the all-star classic because there's only one game. Um, but with the four coaches that were selected, uh, Vinny Calgary from the New Hampshire avalanche, Jack Lowry from the Railers junior hockey club, Mike Richard from the Seahawks hockey club and Brett Heigl from the Valley junior warriors. I partnered up Brett and Mike and I partnered up Vinny and Jack and I asked them how they, if they had any preference for how the, the teams were selected. And they all kind of said, let the podcast guys do it. You guys do it. Ooh. So it, it's, yeah. it's, it's Jeff and Lauren versus Neil and Anthony. So it's Ooh. first and second versus third and fourth. <laughs> and <laughs> as Jeff would say, uh, if Anthony and Neil win, we're going to get as enough points to put us in first place. <laughs> Yes. Uh, yeah. Sounds good. That's probably I, what's gonna happen. No, I would say probably it's like 10 points. Yeah, okay. Something like something like that. Um, but well, one debate first that we're gonna have to figure out at this is we know that our team, Anthony and I, we're wearing the white jerseys. Easy team white. I can't figure out still if oh, the dark jerseys God. that you're wearing are gray or black. They're gray. We've seen them in person. I now. don't they know. Are gray. They They're... are gray with black accents. Should we pull? Should that. we? Should we pull everyone in the building when we get to Exeter? Yes. Maybe. They walk in the door. Say, "Hey, what is this?" <laughs> All right. Thank you. Hey, what is this? Last discussion. Do you, you guys? We'll, just, we'll have one of the P kids walking around in the, in both jer- in the jerseys and be like, "What? What do you think this is?" We could do like a 50-50 raffle. Perfect. Uh- <laughs> Um, all right. Do you guys want to announce your team first and then we'll announce our team second? Sure. I'm okay. Sure. You guys go ahead. These are in no particular order. This is just the screenshot I took so I could read it. Right. We have Chris Merriman, defense from the Boston Junior Rangers. Uh, Tate Sodden, defense from the Connecticut Chiefs. Owen Gulka, one of the youngest players in this 
uh, game from the New Jersey 87s, also on defense. Yeah, him and Kevin Wright. Two big. Oh, yeah. Two old fives. (laughs) We have Nicholas McKay defense from the Little Flyers. We have Matthew Perdue defense from the Seahawks Hockey Club. We have Ryan Dempster finishing out our defense from the New Hampshire Avalanche. Not the Boston Red Sox. (laughs) And moving on to forwards, we have RJ Sember from the New England Wolves followed by Logan Downs from the Philadelphia Little Flyers. And then we got a pair of forwards from the Rayla's Hockey Club with yes. Jaden Blackburn and yes. Connor McAleer. Also a pair of forwards from the Valley Junior Warriors in Mac Ward and Luke Denny. And we have a Vermont Lumberjack in Hayden Bullock. And we also have a pair of forwards from the Walpole Express in Philip Parker and Evan Gravel. That'll be fun. Two line names we picked up. Choo, choo. And we have another forward from the New Hampshire Avalanche in Tyler Sitnikov. We have well said. a forward from the New Jersey Renegades in Connor Weisskerger. I apologize if I said that wrong. Also well and said. I think that's right. finishing out in the forwards, we have the uh, Seahawks Hockey Club's Dylan Sabo. And then moving on to goalies, these were fun for us to pick. We have Logan Givens from the Connecticut Chiefs, Cam Wickens from the Railers Junior Hockey Club, and Nick Mutchler from the Valley Junior Warriors. No clue if I said that one right. I think you I did. It, so. I think you did because I've called a Valley Warriors uh, when I was filling in for Jim McCabe. Lots of Jim McCabe shouts today. Uh, down in the Cape at Tony Ken Arena, they played the Warriors. Mutchler, pretty good. Fun names. So Happy that- to have all you. That is team gray slash black slash CBD. Um, <laughs> uh, Anthony, do you want to read ours? Do you want me to make a fool of myself and try to pronounce some of these? Uh, I'll, I'll take care of this. Okay. Deal. <laughs> so well, for, for us, I, I think we'll just start with the goalies. So we have Sean Micah from the new England wolves, Eddie Caven from the New Jersey renegades. And as Jefferson mentioned, Another 05, Kevin Wright from the Seahawks. He actually did play an EHL game in the Walpole Showcase, yep. but he's been a great goaltender for the EHLP. He's on our team. We're happy to have him. Now we'll go on to the defense. From the Connecticut Chiefs, Oliver Hertzberg. From the Railers, Matt Pacheco. From the Valley Junior Warriors, Christian Kalati. From the Walpole Express, Aiden Parker. So we have the two Parkers playing against each other. From the Renegades, Cam Vino. The Lumberjacks, Jack Randall, those are the defensemen for the All-Star team. And for the forwards, we have two players from the Boston Junior Rangers, Mike Bichetto and Max Morris. From the Connecticut Chiefs, Michael Sinari. From the New England Wolves, Michael Rambosek. From the Avalanche, Aaron Racino. From the 87s, we have two line mates who uh, I mentioned as we made the picks, have great chemistry together, Will O'Brien and Jeffrey Boker. From the Philadelphia Little Flyers, Johnny Lee. From the the Seahawks, Ethan Decker. From the Lumberjacks, Nolan Matthews. From the New Hampshire Avalanche, we have Connor McCowell. And also for the Boston Junior Rangers, we have Daniel Doss. I am so glad I let you do that. (laughs) (laughs) Like, like, I am so glad I let you do that. And I'm glad that you're calling the game because I'm not. (laughs) Um, We'll say 10 points each for whichever team wins, right? Which God, Anthony, I hope we want, we win this game because if we don't, we're going to fall even further behind. <laughs> Neil, that's not going to get me out of the basement either way. So it's getting pretty dark down here. So um, obviously we're in the wet to watch for a segment. We're all excited for that. Um, it's been cool too, because all the EHL coaches have reached out because they're going to stick around to watch that game. And um, like, these guys have pointed out there's there's players like Owen Golka and, and Kevin Wright who are 2005 birth years. They're going to get a chance to play in an all star game. So it's going to uh, it's going to be pretty special on the 15th. So that's one big thing that we're all watching for coming up. Um, but because we're in the what to watch for a segment, we'll go around the horn for I don't want to say I don't want to restrict ourselves to just games, but what we want to watch for the most in the second half. And for me, it's the commitments because once you kind of turn over the calendar year, they start to just come in, 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 in waves. Like we got one while we're on this podcast, you want to, I could do some breaking news. Jack Carges from the Rangers is going to MSOE. So it's, it's in the second half, they they come in in waves where we're going to have, so many every week as these kids start to make their decisions. So that's kind of the big thing that I'm watching for. 
and we'll leave the floor for you guys, what you guys are watching for. Mary and Tom Carr, just big fans of the East show. So huge fans. That's awesome. Huge, huge, huge fans. They're from Minnesota and they make it to most showcases. They are one of the most dedicated sets of parents uh, around. So congratulations to them. Uh, I'm, th- I'm thinking uh, in division matchups. I guess I'll go first. It seems like a lot of our divisions still have a lot of games against teams within their own divisions. Yep. Uh, I think when I looked earlier, the little flyers and protect play six times. Oh, <laughs> buckle up. Coach Catron <laughs> versus coach Watt. That's going to be fun. But seriously, I mean, we talked about earlier, right? With the chiefs railers, they still play each other. I believe it's five times. Uh, Rangers and express still have some games to play against each other. So it's, and you just look at all these different divisions and the teams that are towards the top or trying to fight towards the top still have to play teams within their own divisions. That's what is going to make the second half great. And, I think that's something that we should all watch out for. I think Jeff kind of mentioned one of mine, but the uh, Chiefs and the Railers, that has been just such an exciting matchup. And they play uh, each other soon. I believe it is the 10th. Uh, They play at Worcester. So that'll be interesting because like it's been an absolute battle between those two teams, whoever's home rink they're playing at. And another Fun thing that I'm excited to see how it pans out is the Valley Junior Warriors have a new face that will be guarding the net for them in Nico Carrere. Mm. I think that's how you say it. So I'm excited to see something Mm. like that. I'm excited to see how that pans out for them because I know that's been kind of something that they've been trying to work on so far this season to kind of propel themselves to where they should be so i'm excited to see how that pans out and honestly i'm excited for all the ehlp stuff i think it's really fun to finally get a bunch more conversation going for them i'm excited that justin helped push us to get some p kids into the fantasy that's so fun (laughs) i'm excited that we had a hand in picking the all-star game i should be on the call for that helping out so i'm excited for that so yeah between the the glass there so that'll be exciting but yeah, I'm, I, I think it's fun that they're finally getting some more love. And I think, I feel like based off of how it's been for the EHL guys, I think the P kids are going to have fun being on here and being picked for stuff like this too. Anthony. Hmm. Uh, the, the Homer in me says the, uh, the 87s <laughs> have some good teams coming up against the little flyers and the protect junior ducks. Uh, Beyond just games, I also do want to keep a close eye on the Connecticut Rough Riders because uh, Colin Bella was able to break the Rough Riders record. Yeah, for a uh, goal scored right now. Fifty-eight. Yep, he had a two-goal game against the the Railers to uh, to break the record and then get another one. And he has a legitimate shot at becoming the number two all-time goal scorer. Uh, I think it's Bryce Whitman. He has 79 career goals in the EHL. So I think for him, that'll be kind of tough. But the the way he entered the holiday break, scoring like a goal or two a game, he might actually do it. I think the Rough Riders have 21 games left on the schedule. If he goes at a goal a game, he could actually like maybe reach that number one uh, spot. That would be interesting. So, you know, can can he do it? I certainly hope so, and uh, it, it should be a, a fun thing to watch for the Connecticut Rough Riders. I think this isn't, t- like, I guess technically isn't EHL anymore what to watch for, but I think keeping an eye on John Weber and Ty Franchi, see how they fare and see when they start getting some playing time with their new college teams will be kind of cool. They have uh, Ty Franchi for Lebanon Valley College and John Weber we mentioned for SUNY Potsdam, so that'll be fun. I'm supposed to be talking to them soon for some commitment interviews, so I'm hoping to get some good stuff out of them, especially now knowing that they both played each other growing up, so that'll be fun to talk about and as i said in the first half it felt like we started the season with a big inhale and then exhale until we got to the holiday break so we can do it all again and we can exhale when we get to the finals because they're going to be here before we know it the next the next three months are always to me probably the best three months of the season um because january and february are just filled with tight playoff races and the commitments and then march is march right and we've seen in the past that Anything can happen in March. And while there's maybe favorites right now um, in each division, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody catches us by surprise in either EHL or EHLP. And hopefully we're going to knock on wood right now. Hopefully all signs are pointing in the right direction 
for us to get back to Providence this year, right? Because last year our finals were in Westchester um, because of the different restrictions and whatnot. Knock on wood, everything is all systems go right now for Providence. And really what's funny is it's just over 80 days away. Like you snap your finger, wow. Providence is going to be here and, and it's going to be awesome. So um, welcome back from the holiday break, guys. And let's have some fun in the second half. Let's do it. Thanks for listening to The E-Show. Learn more at easternhockeyleague.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Also be sure to subscribe and get notified when next week's podcast is released.